So the biggest uh, calculus we have is like, when do we open the windows? Um, so we do have the air conditioning on, and occasionally you might hear the blower go on, like, especially back there, which is actually the coolest spot in the house. That's where the coolest people are. Yeah. The <laughs> coolest people are back, but the only downside to that is every once in a while you might get a little less acoustics back there. But if it's ever a problem, just let me know. We have a little fan up here. For people who are in the power seats, you can uh, at will open the windows um, if it's slightly cooler and if there's any breeze. Anyway, so that's what we're dealing with. How How's everyone doing? Is good? Yeah. I just want to make sure you have enough oxygen because there is probably more oxygen out there. Um, how many people have never been here before? i just like to get a beat on that. So you're in the right place. It's not always this full, but thanks to Tony. <laughs> um, how many people have seen Tony before? Not live. Hey, wow. This is great. Well, um, I'm really excited to be presenting Tony in this um, acoustic space, and he insisted on playing acoustic, and I think it's going to be great, and um, it's a wonderful treat to have him here. Um, I also want to let you know that we have been doing this for about 10 plus years, 450 plus shows, kind of losing count wow. a little bit. Um, so we do present music of all genre, and we hope you come back and check it out. I have a website, froggy.com, and uh, we are also live streaming the show. So if you see a show that looks kind of intriguing and you want to check it out, you can watch on the live stream, and the live stream stays up afterwards. So you can go home and watch this show. Right after the show, get, get out your fiddles or your uh, sorry your guitars and <laughs> or your fiddle and play with a guitar, huh? Um, anyway, um, it's with a. I'm really thrilled to be pre presenting Tony McManus tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jeez, you do not want to hear me playing the fiddle. <laughs> It was my first instrument. I started on the fiddle. And then the neighbors got a petition going. <laughs> Buy him a mandolin. And shut the windows. Anyway, it's lovely to be here. It's nice and warm. Yeah. <laughs> it sound okay at the back? Hi. Hi. Yeah? yeah. Sound expensive. <laughs> it's the main thing. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for coming out. It's great to be playing again. Back out on the road. Yay! Live music, give it up. <clears throat> I think we're all on the same page. Aren't we? Anyway, I'm going to start with a couple of jigs. And then I'll tell you about them.
first one is called Kalyana. It was written by a woman called Ima Mayo from the county Mayo. And the second one was written by a guy called Jean Paul Loyer, who was from Montreal. And he played the banjo. And he was a lawyer. <laughs> I think the world, the world would be a better place if all lawyers were forced to play the banjo. <laughs> Anyway, it's great to be here in Portland. As my friend Kevin Burke says, there are two Portlands in the United States. There's Portland Mine, and then there's the Mine Portland. I told that story to an audience in Portland, Maine, and Kevin Burke will never work there again. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> that's not true. The first time I was in Portland, Oregon was with Alistair Fraser, mm. Scottish yeah. fiddler, extraordinaire. Mm. And we had just made an album uh, called Return to Kintail. Oh, yeah. And Freedom. we recorded the album in two sittings, basically. One in Glasgow and one in Nevada City, California. Mm -hmm. And Alistair was desperate to have the word Contail somewhere in the title of the album, so I said, well, why not call it Contail of Two Cities? <laughs> <laughs> I'll get your coat. <laughs> but uh, this is the first track on that album. And it's, it's a, a lullaby from the Isle of Barra in the Outer Hebrides. And in it, there's a woman singing to her sleeping baby, and she's describing the wedding feast that's going to happen when the kid grows up and gets married. And the verses list all the clans that are going to be there. And the chorus says that wine will be drunk and whiskey will flow, and the sons of kings will be at your wedding. Be clan a ree, ree is king in Gaelic. The sons of kings will be at your wedding. Pipes will be played, songs will be sung, or an ophib, and there'll be a whole tribe of people from Ulster. <laughs> <laughs> Almost certainly uninvited. <laughs> <laughs> but they get the title, it's called Clan Uli. Clan Uli, the clan of Ulster.
you very much. You're all still awake? That was a lullaby. <laughs> it's pretty cool because almost all Scott's Gaelic songs have got the same storyline. That one doesn't, it's an exception. The usual storyline is just, I met you once and now you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much how it goes. Anyway. I was in Ireland a few years ago at a wonderful guitar festival in County Cork, Clonakilty, West Cork. They have a great guitar festival and I, I was invited over. And one of the things I had to do was uh, take part in a thing called the Acoustic Forum. And they had four players on stage, all four of us sitting in a row, and a moderator to my left. <laughs> Moderator. Remember they thought a fight was going to break out. <laughs> I said it was a fucking dad get you. <laughs> that kind of thing it happens with a good guitar player. <laughs> so, the moderator was a man called George Loudon. How many of you play guitar? Yeah. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> um, you'll know who George Loudon is. Uh, the founder and owner and master luthier of Loudon guitars. Uh, in Northern Ireland, Northern Ireland. Uh, I've known George. I've known George for years. He's a wonderful man. Um, but in the middle of this event, uh, you know, we were taking questions from the audience, and he was directing the questions. And at one stage, he could very gingerly leant down and he picked up a Loudon guitar. He picked up one of his guitars and he handed it to me. He said, "Now, Tony, I know you have relationships with other luthiers, but uh, is there any chance you could play a tune on one of mine?" <laughs> <laughs> beauty, yes, because when I was a kid, um, my idea of a great Saturday afternoon would be to take the train from Paisley Gilmer Street, where I grew up, into Glasgow Central, where my mother grew up, walk up Renfield Street, right on Bath Street, and there's McCormick's music up to the second floor, and there's all the acoustic guitars on the wall, and the higher up the wall they were, the more, <laughs> the more inaccessible in every way they became. So, one bright day, there was a Loudon guitar, and I'd never seen one in the flesh before, so to speak, and I was enthralled, and I stood staring at it for about three and a half hours, <laughs> and finally I plucked up the courage, I said to the the dude in the store, I said, I, 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 I don't suppose there's any chance you could maybe like, uh, bring it, and, and, and I, I, maybe I could, uh, he just looked at me, he said, no. <laughs> <laughs> so here's George Loudon handing me a Loudon guitar. Oh, mm. Yes. <laughs> and it was a Richard Thompson signature model. <laughs> Despite the fact that Richard never does any of my stuff. <laughs> Though I'm working with him in July. Or maybe teach him. He's a wonderful camp in Woodstock. Oh, frets and refrains. Come on in! Thank you. We were just passing time when we got here. <laughs> Sits in his tower of steel. The dogs of money are at his heel. Magicians cry, O oh, truth, the oh, real. We're all looking for the Pharaoh. Join in. A thousand eyes, a thousand ears. He feeds us all, he feeds our fears. Don't stir in. Sleep, my dear. We're all looking for the Pharaoh. And it's Egypt land, Egypt land. We're all in the head, Egypt land. Tell me, brother, don't you understand?
from the eye of chance The man of shadows dance the dance We're all struck into a trap Cyrus High We calling for the Pharaoh And it's Egypt land Egypt land We're all living in Egypt land Tell me sister Don't you understand I shape a stone, another battlement for his throne, another day on earth is blown. in his tower of steel around his feet the prince is near far below we shoulder the wheel changing tunes. Yeah. I mean, I, obviously I love the acoustic guitar. I, I get bored yeah. shitless watching people tune on stage. The whole <laughs> so I try... Uh, I thought you were going to uh, say you get bored shitless playing the same tune. What's that? Hmm? I thought you were going to say you get bored shitless playing the same tune. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I, I try not to change, you know, organize it so that there's, it's grouped. Yeah. Yeah. So that I'm not changing tunings the whole time. It's a very interesting question. Though. The usual question is just, what's the tuning for X? What, what do you play the tuning for? Blah 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 blah. So for those who are curious, this is Gaelic tuning. Okay, that's G A E L I C. M O U S E. I stole that gag from Archie Fisher so long ago that he thinks he got it from me. <laughs> anyway, so things are moving again. We're, we're back out on the road. It's fantastic. I missed it enormously. I was going insane at home. And it's lovely. And I'm just so happy to be back out touring and traveling and, and, and meeting all you people. And, uh, <laughs> which means we're back to spending, I'm back to spending half my life in airports. Mm. Um, which is, you know, there's worse things to whine about than that. But, you know, guitar players, 
we have this kind of etiquette in airports where if you see someone walking towards you with a gig bag, you know, with a soft guitar case on the back, you kind of acknowledge membership of the fraternity. You know, yeah. you just nod and say hello. Whether you know them or you don't, you generally don't. Just some dude walking towards you in an airport. You go, know, hello, and you go, oh, hello. Yeah. And you carry on. That's, that's, that's just the way we do things in the guitar world. So there I was in LAX a few years ago. Actually, not that many years ago. And there's this serious looking dude walking towards me, jet black hair, jet black leather jacket, leather gig bag. Wow. And I said, oh, hello. And he said, oh, right, mate, how you doing? And we walked on and I thought, oh, fuck, that was Jeff Beck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it was. It was Jeff. And just to make it all the more absurd, I didn't have a guitar with me. No. I was I mean, no. <laughs> just some random dude walking down the airport oh, concourse saying hello. Mm -hmm. But uh, we lost the great Jeff not so long ago. And so I'm going to play a wee tribute to him. And it's slightly cheeky because this was written by Donald Lunny as a tribute to someone else. Um, who I didn't know it was written. The tune is called Declan, and it was written for Declan McNallis, who was a bass player from Dublin. But Jeff Beck heard this tune and fell in love with it and recorded it in his own inimitable way. And I am not going to even attempt to play it the way he played it. But I'm going to play it anyway. This is Declan. Beautiful slow air. And we'll see what happens after. It might not stay slow. We'll see. Thank you. 
we have an embarrassment of riches on stage. Um, Bloody hell, you know, three, <laughs> three, 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 three guitars, you know. Well, I don't. Um, I, I generally travel with a maximum of two. Um, I'll explain. This guitar uh, was made by my... Made by the guy who made my very first good guitar, right? But this isn't it. <laughs> this belongs to my friend Rick Weitzel. It was made by Bill Keldy in Campsie Glen, Scotland. Uh, my, my first four albums were made with a Keldy guitar. And uh, he was just a really important figure in my trajectory. And it's so lovely to see one of his guitars here in Portland. This town home to more than one great guitar builder, one of whom is here in the audience. Hi Mike. Um, so this, it's just a real pleasure to play this guitar. It just, it, it takes me back to the kind of beginning of, of the career. Bill was brilliant, brilliant luthier. And, how old is this guitar? 20 years ago? Uh, 2003. So 2003. I've got guitars that don't look like this and I've had them for three weeks. <laughs> Perfect. Well, anyway, here's, here's a song from the romantic period of Scottish music. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> when the hell was that? The romantic period of Scottish music was a long weekend in 1793. We got it over with really quickly. We don't do romance. Uh, particularly well in Scotland, <laughs> let it be said. Um, there was a story recently in the newspaper in Stornoway about a man who loved his wife so much he nearly told her. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're dealing with here. Anyway, this is an unrequited love song. Uh, <coughs> so many unrequited love songs in Scottish music, it's astonishing we have a population at all.
chain by sleeping. And what of love she will not hear. So you may go and court another. And whisper softly in her ear. on standby. Uh, um, this isn't my guitar either. <laughs> I'm traveling with my very dear friend Jackson Schmidt. Anytime you're doing a series of house concerts in Oregon, you need a six foot four lawyer to travel with you, I think. Jackson is a very fine guitar player and has a handful of very, very beautiful guitars, uh, including this one. So this came on the road with this made by Jim Olson in Minneapolis? Oh. Yeah, Minneapolis. And he's famous for making guitars for one particular singer-songwriter. Who is? James Taylor. Wow, you guys are good. <laughs> I didn't even have to do the Pat Metheny clue. <laughs> That's a tune called James that was written by Matheny for Mr. Seamus Taylor. I'm not going to do a James Taylor song. Um, I just got back from Australia a couple of weeks ago and I had a fantastic time out there. I did five festivals in six weeks and a ton of gigs in between but I finished up in Sydney but just before that I played the National Festival in Canberra and I got to meet some musicians I've been listening to for 25 years and I've never met. And they've been listening to me for not quite that long, but uh, it was a very lovely meeting. And I got to sit in with them in front of 3,000 people playing just a couple of very simple group tunes. There's no such thing. The first tune was a 916 and the second one is an 1116. It's what you need. Tunes with time signatures that look like wrench sizes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to play a couple of tunes from Greece. The musical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A 
neither of them is an 1116. The first one is called I'll Jump Off the Balcony. <laughs> you have to get out of Celtic mode to play this stuff. <laughs>
Four March written by Phil Cunningham uh, called The Centino di Jewel. Beautiful tune. Um, and the tune before it was well, I meant for Limerick. So let me play one more, then we'll take a break. Does that feel about right? Okay. This is great fun. I'm having a ball. I mean, <laughs> it needs a bunch of guitars and a chair. I'm going to finish with the. Uh, oh God. A medley of three tunes. The first one was written by uh, André Marchand, a great friend of mine from Juliette in La Belle Provence de Québec. 
Andre, uh, he played with the band called Labatt in Surion. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. oh yeah. oh yeah. Back when they were a trio. Mm. There's now about 12 of them. Yes. <laughs> yeah, at least. They started as a trio. Uh, and uh, Andre was the guitar player. And, uh, and the singer. And he wrote this tune. He lives in Joliet, Quebec. His family's been there for generations. Um, so have you come up with a tune called Exile? I don't know, but you did. <laughs> That's the name of that tune. And the second one's an old uh, Quebecois fiddle tune from uh, a fiddler called André Alain. And the tune is called La Rêve du Quai du Tremblay. Any fluent French speakers? It means the hovercraft of my aunt is to the left of the railway station. <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> And then a tune from Brittany, from my Breton guitar buddy, Swag Sibiru, called Sandizan. Sandizan is an old Breton word that means too many notes. <laughs> um, and then we'll take a break. There's fresh air outside. There's... What else is there to do? I don't know. Have a there's food, probably. You can have a drink. There's a, oh, there's CDs. <laughs> you look like the kind of people that don't bother with all that streaming nonsense. <laughs> you like physical product that you can hold in your hand. And you like multiple copies of them that you can give to your friends as gifts <laughs> as Christmas is fast approaching. <laughs> you know what they say? What do they say? They say I'll tell you what they say. <laughs> what do they say? What do they say? What do they say? You can experience a download, but you can't download an experience. <laughs> so anyway, the CDs are over there. There's DVDs as well, instructional DVDs of how to play the guitar and look miserable, <laughs> which is essential for Celtic music. <laughs> and that's all there is to say about that. Any questions? No, good, okay. I'll play one more and then we'll take a short break and then we'll do it all again.
tune for the next three quarters of an hour. That's the best part of the show. It's not on your set list. The tuning. Guitar players are supposed to have a repertoire of tuning gags to keep the audience amused while you struggle and fail to get the guitar in tune. I don't do this. I was at a gig in Glasgow in the audience years ago and I saw it go horribly wrong. Poor guy on stage, who used to remain nameless. His name is Charlie Harrigan. <laughs> <laughs> he used to run the Glasgow Folk Festival and he ran it into the ground. Um, but he was doing an open mic thing at the Glasgow Folk Club. A, a floor spot, as it's called. And uh, whatever he'd done to the guitar earlier in the day it was having its revenge. Mm. And he could not get the damn thing tuned. The Glasgow audiences are not known for being patient and accommodating. 
And it was getting a wee bit tense, you know, glasses would be rattled on the tables and people were like sharpening knives. And things. <laughs> Charlie thought, I better tell a gag here. He said, aye, he said, aye, as soon as I get the guitar tuned, I'm going to get it welded. <laughs> so not, it's not the worst tuning joke ever. And someone in the front row yelled out, yeah, Charlie, get it welded to a bus. <laughs> <laughs> So I've never told a tuning joke since. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Got your attention. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but when I... <laughs> when I was a kid, you used to get thrown out of guitar stores for playing that. And rightly so. <laughs> Who needs to hear? But I... Started wondering how things would have turned out differently if Jimmy Page had been born elsewhere. You know, he was born in London, so he could. If he'd been born in Scotland, had Jimmy Page been born in Scotland, it would have been. Strathspey <laughs> right. to Harry. <laughs> Get my coat. Strass paid to heaven. Had he been born in Greece, since we're talking about Greece, if Jimmy Page had come from Greece, it'd be. Kletzmer. Yeah. Oh. oh, next year. I have to go <laughs> next year and done the Kletzmer version. If Jimmy Page had been replaced by Chet Atkins. <laughs> I've got one. Um, no, Chet Atkins plays Kletzmer, but I'm in the wrong tune. Um, I have a request. Yeah. Fire away. I made me think of Black Waterside, which Jimmy Page played, but I like the Richard Thompson version. Well, Jimmy Page stole it from Bertie Ash. Oh, and lots of other things besides. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, sadly, but I'll learn it. Next time. Okay. Put it on the list. Okay. Um, any fans of Steve Reich? Mmm. Mm. <laughs> cerebral, that one. <laughs> Empty, empty cerebral. If yeah. Steve Reich had joined Led Zeppelin, it would have been one. Yeah. <laughs> it would go on for 27 minutes. <laughs> And it would be called Stairway to Counterpoint. <laughs> John Cage. John Cage joined Led Zeppelin. It would be this. And it would go on for precisely four minutes and 33 seconds. <laughs> Miles Davis. <laughs> you have to turn around and face the other way. No, I see Bippy Gambetta, Gambetta, my friend from Genoa. If uh, Jimmy Page had been born in Napoli, it would be a tarantella. <laughs> There's more, but I'm going to spare you. Um, oh, that's easy. <laughs> In Macedonia, it would be 1116. <laughs>
Wait a second. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't I just see it right here? Uh, yeah, I took it up with Stefan Grossman. <laughs> this is a flat pick. Yeah. Not anyone here from customs? <laughs> Fisheries and wildlife? Somewhere in the Galapagos Islands, there's a tortoise running about with a plectrum shaped hole. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true. Oh, no. This is made from sustainable tortoises. <laughs> <laughs> free range, <laughs> free range black drum. Let's do some flat picking.
That's a tune called Desert Dance. A great American guitarist called Isaac Guillory. Um, so here's the opposite of that. <laughs> this is a tune with um, as few notes as possible. Um, I got contacted a few years back um, by Neil Jordan, who's an Oscar-winning film director from Ireland. Has anyone seen The Crying Game? Yes. Yeah. yes. Um, Michael Collins? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, interview with the Vampire? Mm -hmm. The Sound of Music? <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I made that one up. Um, anyway, he contacted me and asked, would you be interested in having a ton of your music on the soundtrack of my next film? And I, you know, I'm no pushover. I thought about it for about three nanoseconds and said, yeah, that would be fine. And he flew me over to Dublin to see what they were at. The film wasn't finished. And then he and I got into this correspondence. He would send bits of music over to me and I would record them and demo them and send them back to him and back and forth up a go. And he sent this piece of music and I said, could you arrange this for steel string guitar? And I said, oh, of course. <laughs> I hadn't a freaking clue what I was doing. This is a piece of late 19th century French romantic piano music by Eric Satie. I, I grew up in Paisley in the west of Scotland in the 70s. There wasn't a lot of Eric Satie in the house. <laughs> when I was a kid, we were more of a Rachmaninoff family. <laughs> but anyway, I arranged it and demoed it and sent it over to Dublin. And I got a message back saying, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, it's lovely, it's perfect length for the, the scene, it's the right atmosphere, it's great. And the film came out and they didn't use it. <laughs> they used Pat Metheny instead, so that's okay. <laughs> He's got bills to pay. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, this is it. There's a bunch of my music on the soundtrack, just not this. And it's, you'll know it, it's in about seven different films. Um, so this is Eric Satie's Nassian number one. Arranged for no good reason whatsoever for solo guitar. So.
occasion where you do that live fade out and you haven't worn the sound of the Thank you very much. There's something again very different. A set of bagpipe tunes, um, Highland bagpipe tunes. I'm going to play a march through Spain reel. Um, the march, it's a beautiful traditional tune called Irene Meldrum's Welcome to Bon Accord. <laughs> Great title for a tune. This is a, a format in Scottish naming um, strategies. <clears throat> My friend Alan MacDonald was competing at one of the Highland gatherings, the Northern Meeting or something, way up in the north of Scotland, in the piping contest, and he played a blinder, and everyone assumed he would win, and he wasn't even placed. It was the Argyllshire Gathering, that's where it was. One of the biggest competitions in the piping world, and they are incredibly competitive. So, there was great controversy over McDonald not winning the gold medal. And he went back to Edinburgh, and he composed a tune called The Argyllshire Gathering's Welcome to its Gold Medal. <laughs> that's pretty cool. And the Strathspey is a tune by Fred Morrison called Hecla, which is a, a mountain in South Uist. And then a tune from Gordon Duncan called the Ram Nee Cayley. So if you feel like you're getting up and flinging yourselves about the room in an ethnic frenzy, now's a good time. 2-4, two, 2-4 four, two, four march to Spay, and a real... Yeah. yeah.
need to know. <laughs> In fact, you don't even need to know that. Because you'll figure it out. Because it's a song. I just get a bit intrigued by singer-songwriters who spend ten minutes introducing a four-minute song, and you end up thinking, what are the lyrics for? <laughs> But I learned this from one of the great finger style guitar players, Martin Simpson. And it was written by one of the great writers, Annie Lister. I never wanted to fly high I was too fond of walking And when you said you'd reach the sky I thought it was your way of talking But you said you'd build some wings You found out how it could be done I was doubtful of everything I never thought you'd reach the sun The feathers and the lace and the flowers, the finished wings, they glowed so bright. Like some old bird of glory began to envy you your flight. Like some old hero story. You tried to get me to go with you. You tried always to dare me, but when I looked at the sky so blue, I thought the height would scare me, but I carried your wings for you. Up the path into the cliff face, kissed you goodbye, and watched your eyes already bright. was a pain deep in my heart. Your wings seemed tipped with fire like some seagull or a lark. Soaring forever or some ember or a spark. Drifting from earth to heaven. Then I believed all that you Believed all that you told me, you do a thing no one had ever done. You touched the stars to please me, as I watched your white wings fail. I saw your feathers fall, turn and watched you drop like a ball of gold into the white. Some are born to follow, and some are born to touch the sky. And some walk in the hollow, but as I watched your body fall, I knew really you had won, for your grave was not to be heard, but the reflection of the sun.
I did a wonderful tour with Martin Simpson um, in England a good number of years ago now. But it was organized by a, a group in Newcastle called Folkworks. And there were five musicians on the tour, and, and the, the whole theme of the thing was the plucked string. The beauty of the plucked string. What a lovely thing to have a tour about. So there was Simpson and myself on guitar. There was Mina Raskinen from Helsinki playing the Finnish cantilla. You're all familiar with the cantilla. No, it's like a skateboard with strings. It's a <laughs> weird instrument. Um, Seku Keita from Senegal playing the kora. And Cleo Ruddich from Anglesey in North Wales, who plays the Welsh triple harp. Three sets of freaking strings on this thing. Oh, wow. And we all played together at the end of the night. We were, there was about 397 strings on stage. 80% of which were out of tune at any given time. So we all kind of exchanged CDs ahead of this tour to see what we could collaborate on. And there on Cleo's CD was a tune called Rosalind Castle. Which I recorded with Alistair Fraser back in the day. And we met up in Candle in the Lake District. And I said to her, How lovely to hear Scottish traditional music played on the Welsh triple harp. <laughs> Big mistake. She grabbed me gently by the throat <laughs> and said, It's Welsh, look you. Roslyn's just outside Edinburgh, and there's a castle there called Roslyn Castle. It's Welsh! So we argued back and forth, and then finally compromised and decided it was a, a, a tune from the Scottish Welsh border. <laughs> it's close to the border between Italy and Sweden. So I'm going to play that, and it's followed by a tune which is definitely from a border. It's a. Uh, Written by Swank Sibiru in the beautiful Galician city of Vigo, which is right next to the Portuguese border. You can walk from Vigo to Portugal. So, Rosalind Castle.
did okay? Yeah. 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 Are you? Are you? <laughs> I'm having a fine time. Um, so yeah, the pandemic. Going to knock things on the head for a while. And you may have guessed I'm from Scotland. And I live in Canada, but I, I'm back in Scotland um, every year. Or I had been every year, multiple times sometimes. But then there was a three year gap. And we were all stuck at home. But I'm going back in September, and I was back in June of last year. Right, we played in Paisley, the hometown. We played in Glasgow and Edinburgh, Stirling, and Findhorn and Inverness. The capital of the Highlands. Not many people know that Inverness is actually an acronym. You know what it stands for? Yeah, it stands for it's not very exciting right enough, even Saturday Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> That's Inverness. So we were up there. Played at the Eden Court Theatre. Um, I caught up with a, one of my old school teachers, which was a pleasure. To, catching up with many of my school teachers would be less than pleasant, but she was one of my favourites. I don't know if she was my favourite. And because, among many things, she, she was our English teacher. And she was the only person in the school that taught us the beauty of the Scots language. Not Scots Gaelic, which she didn't speak, neither do I. Um, I'm talking about lo the Lowland Scots dialect, the, the language of Robert Burns, and in Paisley, Robert Tannehill. And we were brought up to not use those words. Um, we, we, it was a kind of, kind of vulgar corruption of proper English, so we got we it slapped out of us. But she taught us otherwise. Um, it's all the more remarkable because her name is Mitzi Weiss and she's from Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> I think every Catholic school in the west of Scotland should have a tiny Jewish lady teaching <laughs> Lowland Scots. <laughs> so she taught us all about the beauty of Robert Burns. And here's one of his. This song involves his two great uh, interests in life which were drink and sex. Yestreen I had a pint of wine, a place where bodies sawn. Yestreen lay on the hearth, priest of mine, the gowd and lock so high. The hungry Jew in the wilderness, rejoicing out his manner, had nothing to my any bliss upon the lips. Ye monarchs tack the east and west, the endless day Savannah. Ye me within thy straining grass, the melting fall of Canada. Then I'll disguise imperial charms, an empress or sultana, while dying raptures in their arms may give and take. We
A wallow flaunting garden day, a wallow pale I am. Elk stargy hide thy twinkling ray, for now to meet my Anna. Come then, thy raven plumage night, sun, moon, and stars were drawn out, and bring an angel pen to write my transports with. The Kirk and State may join and tell to do such things I bought. The Kirk and State may gang to hell, and I'll go to my Anna. She is the sunshine of my to live but her I can Had I on her but wishes three The first should be my Anna Slangle my uh, farewell to the meek. And then a jig, and then a slip jig, and then a reel. Is that okay? Yes. Any questions? <laughs> the reel is from Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. Have you been there? Yeah. Fantastic place. It's full of Scottish people. <laughs> after, the, after the clearances, um, boatloads of, of Highland Scots were sent over to North America to make way for sheep. <laughs> and it's true. And they landed in Florida and they got off the boats and they looked at the beautiful blue skies and the palm trees wafting in the breeze and they thought, screw this. <laughs> We've heard of an island to the north. <laughs> <laughs> In Nova Scotia, let us go to Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, where they have horizontal rain and even more sheep. So off they went. So Cape Breton, there's only about seven surnames in Cape Breton, they're all Scots. Um, so I'm going to finish this set with a tune from John Morris Rankin, a wonderful fiddle player. A tune called Hull's Rail. Alright. Okay, fasten your seatbelts.
ladies and gentlemen of Portland. Uh, Oregon. <laughs> what a pleasure it's been to play for you. I think we have to have a robust and significant round of applause for Abby. Yeah. <laughs> It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. It was it was our pleasure. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> and gosh, you you're all here after your bedtime. <laughs> oh, I'm the energizer bunny of the acoustic guitar. <laughs> Unstoppable. Thank you so much for coming out, and thank you for coming to our house. It's been phenomenal. And thank you for watching online. And guess what? Uh, for all of you who didn't catch every single note, you can go back online and watch it. <laughs> I highly recommend it. <laughs> anyway. Thank you very much. I'm going to finish with this. Uh, thank you. Again, thank you very much for coming out. Thank you, Supporting Jeremy. live music. Yeah. 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 Great, that's back. Once again. Another tune for Gordon Duncan. This is uh, it's called the sleeping tune. I want to finish with. Thank you very much. There's still a handful of CDs left. <laughs> Only a handful. Like I have to limit you to four per person. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>
to do that. There's nowhere to go with it. <laughs> um, Trip down memory lane. Um, thank you very much. Very fancy. No there. Rogers. So. Things have gone from completely dead to completely frantic, seemingly overnight, and uh, I'm a bit knackered. So I'm going to play <laughs> on this beautiful Kelday guitar. The laziest set of tunes ever written. <laughs> It involves virtually no movement whatsoever, it's two <laughs> fingers. <laughs> and that's it. And I'll say goodnight with these. The lazy two. <laughs> Come back, I'll play better. Night-night. <laughs> <laughs> All right.